And we are joined today by Jason Blaine, who, of course, is going to be coming into the Encore Bar and Night Spot on Friday, October the 1st. Jason, thanks for joining us. Hey, man, absolutely. Thanks for having me on. So this weekend, as well as a part of our uh, country countdown, we're going to be focusing and featuring the brand new single, uh, Hillbilly Girl. Maybe you can tell us a bit about that song. Oh, well, it's it's just a lot of fun. You know, I uh, we, we shot a video for it as well, uh, just outside of Orangeville, Ontario, that's uh, just starting to uh, air on CMT, and, and it was probably the most fun I ever had at the video shoot. The song and, and the video both really reflect um, what it's like uh, to be out on the road and playing live, and either in uh, clubs or at those great country festivals that we do, and, and all of the country fans that show up, especially the Hillbilly Girls. So what is the song Hillbilly Girl about? Just all those girls that, sh- all the country girls that show up to your shows? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, a, it's about, uh, it's about, it's also about, you know, living in the country and what it's, and what it's like to, you know, to kind of grow up, uh, you know, in a field party kind of culture like I did, you know, growing up in small town Ontario. And, and we see that all across the country, um, well, just... you know, um, you know, in my case, it was, it was cranking up, you know, Brooks and Dunn records, you know, and. And so hopefully uh, the fans will be cranking up Hillbilly Girl this fall. And I was just going to say, just like when we were up at uh, Lucknow, north of uh, London, and uh, man, people people have uh, strong constitutions because it was raining and it was cold. Yeah, and you know what? Those fans, I tell you, they were amazing because um, I was fortunate. I was on a little earlier um, in the day, um, probably 3 or 4 o'clock, and um sun was coming out and going but it was it wasn't dark and cold yet and i mean the rain just didn't let up and by the time paul brand came on later on he was the headliner of the of the festival um you know it was the fans had been there for a while in the rain and in the cold and they stuck it out the whole time um it was awesome nobody left and uh it, we had, we all had a blast so what a little rain right Definitely. It seems like country fans, they're so dedicated to the music. Any concert I've been to where it's rained or it's been cold, they stick it out no matter what. Oh, absolutely. And I'm always amazed. Uh, at, like you say, no matter what, you know, when we did uh, a big festival out west last summer, it was uh, really, really hot. I mean, scorching hot. And those hillbilly girls were standing there in their cowboy boots and cutoffs for like an hour, uh, an hour and a half in the autograph line. Uh, I was uh, just incredibly humbled by that, that somebody would wait, you know, um, patiently in line to get whatever their cowboy hat signed or, or CD signed or something like that. I mean, that that's really awesome. It really it really makes uh, what we do on the road, just we just feel so appreciated. So did you have a tough time getting a casting call out there for uh, girls to be the, con- the hillbilly girls? <laughs> not so much, not so much. <laughs> Actually, the producers of the video told me they had to turn some people away um, just to kind of keep it all controlled, keep the environment controlled. But it was, it was awesome. I think the the video is it was, it was a, just a lot of fun, and uh, and that's what it's about. I mean, uh, with this record, um, there's some stuff on there that's a little more a little more serious. Um, you know, deal with all all themes in life. The first single from the record. Numb. It's just about heartbreak, and people go through that too. And that's that's part of music, and it's part of life. And um, and then Hillbilly Girl is just you know the complete opposite. It's just it's just fun, and uh, and I think that 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 really reflects life. I mean, it's there's highs and lows, and ups and downs, and and uh, and that's really what people will find on the new record too. It's the full range of emotion. And with Hillbilly Girl, talking about it's just starting to move its way up the charts now, but. Run with me, the second single off your album Sweet Sundown, still doing really well on the uh, the countdowns and the charts. Yeah, I'm really really thrilled with that. Um, I really like Run with Me. I always like the way the song turned out, and uh, and I like those songs that that feel like a good song to put in your car and, and go on a long drive. And the last my last record, uh, the record kicked off with track number one being Good Day to Get Gone, and so I took that approach too with uh, with this new record, um, Sweet Sundown. Uh, first track is Run With Me, and, and um, uh, we just really enjoy it, and we can't say thanks enough to, to radio for, for playing uh, my music. And, you know, it, it adds one more song to the show, one more song the fans can sing along to, and, uh, and it's just all that much more fun. And I'll bet there's a lot of people that don't realize on the new album there's a cover of a Brian Adams song and kind of a neat little story behind it as well. Yeah, you know, that song is really special to me. Um, uh, my wife and I both always just love that song. It's a song uh, not not a lot of people know, but it's from the, um, I think it's from the Hope Floats soundtrack, and it's um, called When You Love Someone, and uh, it was the first song, one of the, one of the first dances uh, at our wedding. 
And um, so it's just one of those special songs I always thought would make a great country song. And so we uh, we paired it with some really sweet fiddle, twin fiddle harmony, and and I, I'm really proud of the way the track turned out. And uh, we'll be doing it in the show too. And and it's um, it's just a real special song. And and I'm a huge Brian Adams fan, and um, I, I think that uh, I hope that if he uh, ever hears the version, I hope that he would think uh, we did it justice. I was going to say I was going to ask you if you've ever had a chance to talk to Brian. No, Brian's really. Uh, you know, he, he's kind of reclusive and hangs out. And he lives in London, England, and a lot of time there. Oh, you're still with us, Jason? I, I am. I just lost you for a second. We're on the road, and uh, we just cut out for just for a second. Um, we're actually making our way up to my hometown of uh, Pembroke, Ontario, and this is where the whole tour starts. Uh, the Run With Me fall tour right across Canada starts in my hometown um, tonight, and so... We're uh, we're in some back roads of Ontario here on our way on our way up, <laughs> taking it into the valley, are you? Yeah, definitely. And and tonight's going to be extra special, kicking the tour off in my hometown. A um, lot of a uh, lot of family and friends, and a lot of people that I haven't seen uh, in a long time um, coming out to the show. I got I got messages on Facebook from uh, from some of my high school teachers that are uh, have bought a ticket and are coming out, and so it's going to be uh, kind of a homecoming for me. As I said, that's going to be a lot of fun to be able to go back to your hometown and, you know, after you've become so successful and be able to sort of, you know, almost brag and show off your success. Well, you know what? On the contrary, I mean, I've played some huge shows. I've opened shows for Tim McGraw and George Strait, and I toured with Brooks and Dunn this year. And tonight in my hometown, I have to confess to feel just, just a little bit anxious to play in front of that audience compared to all the big things that I've done. Um, there's something different about, you know, playing your hometown and, and in front of all those friends and family, and it's just different. I don't know. Maybe an opportunity to uh, thumb your nose a little bit at anyone that might have picked on you in school? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think so, but it, it's definitely, <laughs> I can tell you that, I, that that town, I've got a lot of support from the community and, and stuff. I, I will say I took a lot of flack in, in high school for country music wasn't the most popular thing amongst my, my crowd of friends who were listening to hip-hop and heavy metal have you converted all your friends though to country music now yeah you know i think everybody i think when we first went into high school i think that my friends some of them went through a bit of an identity crisis you know i'm like you know listening to eminem and some hip-hop and i'm just like really we're from you know small town pembroke ontario not detroit or east la right yeah you're surrounded by uh you know deep river and cobden and <laughs> yeah exactly no, I was. Uh, I mean, of course, I I love good rock too. Like I I, I was a fan of like ACDC and like I said, Brian Adams and, and stuff. Uh, but uh, but you know, country music has always uh, really really fit with me, and I always just felt a connection with it. I think it's the the lyric and the story and the melody too, though, and the instrumentation. I do love the steel guitar and I do love fiddle. So um, I don't know. I always just I grew up with country music and and um, I'll always love it. Now, you've had three songs come off the current album, Sweet Sundown. Have you started even thinking about writing any new stuff and what you might do for a, the next album? Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, with Hillbilly Girl, we're on the third single, and we're, we're considering uh, a fourth single from the record. But uh, it's incredible how the time flies. Um, you know, um, as we get set to release Hillbilly Girl, I actually recorded the song in April of 2009. Um, so, I mean, I've been living with the song a long time, so it's, it's strange to me that it's only, it's, it's old to me already. We were touring and playing it in the show last summer, and now it's only making its way to the airwaves. And so, so yeah, I mean, it does feel like um, it takes a long time to, to record something, and by the time you record it to get it out um, to the fans. And so, yeah, I mean, um, I, I'm, I keep excited about what I'm doing by, um, by writing something new and, and recording it. I try to, um, I, try to I, like, I like it whenever what I'm doing now creatively, whenever that reflects like where I'm at uh, with what I have out on the radio, when that really reflects where I'm at creatively. And now, I you... try not to keep that gap, if you know what I mean, between um, the time that I've written it, because I actually wrote Hillbilly Girl three years ago. So um, I'm, as artists and writers, we always we would love to have the thing we wrote yesterday out on the radio. So <laughs> that really keeps us moving forward in, in terms of wanting to write new stuff and record. Now, it must keep it in perspective for you, considering you wrote that three years ago, and here your, your you know, two young children were probably, you know, barely thought of at that point, right? 
Yeah, you know, and, and that's that's true, you know, because Hillbilly Girl is there's there's uh, young, you know, beautiful country girls in the video, and that's that's great, and I love to party up like that too. And I've written some now. I've I've actually turned thirty this year, and uh, my kids are a little older. And I think that this uh, this next record, I think that as I as I continue to write and stuff, um, the themes might change too as I as I move along in my career. That's why I'm looking forward to uh, already starting to even think about the uh, another record, even past Sweet Sundown. But we still have a lot of life to go in this record, I think, and um, we'll have um, probably we're aiming to have something off of a new record out by next summer. Um, but Sweet Sundown, this will still carry us through uh, this fall and, and the winter months as well. So can is it safe to say that the next album might have some lullabies or some uh, some little fairy tale songs on it? I don't think I'm going to get that old that fast. <laughs> you know, I, I uh, touring with Brooks and Dunn in May, I was really honored to be invited on that tour. And I really, uh, I, I've always um, looked up to those guys. I mean, uh, they, in many ways, they were the soundtrack to my youth through the early 90s, you know, when they busted onto the scene. And what I admired about those guys is, I mean, Ronnie Dunn at this point is 56 years old. And, um, you know, I'm sure that you know, his kids are probably off to university. But through that whole era of fun, uh, honky tonk and good time and stuff, you know, they they kind of they did that, and they really didn't dive into you know um, that kind of you know too many um, lullaby kind of songs, if you know what I mean. They they kept it they kept it light and they kept it fun and reflective of um, they gave the fans what what they wanted. And certainly they appreciate that as well. Jason, we're so looking forward to seeing you uh, at Encore and spending some time with you as well. And uh, really appreciate you taking a few minutes out of your day today to uh, spend with us too. Thanks so much, guys. I'm so looking forward to the show.